Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to look at the two new watercolor sets from Prima Marketing. And um, I think these are quite a bit different than the other sets and I think that there's a little more information and um, kind of training that you need to use these versus the other watercolor sets which are definitely more of your traditional transparent watercolors. So uh, I just received these a couple days ago. I got these from Hallmark Scrapbook and they're currently having 15% off all of their Prima watercolor products, I believe. I'll put a link in the video description so that you can go over there. Um, I believe they're selling the first three sets, which I'll show you in a minute, for $21, and then these are $23 or somewhere around there. These these have come out at a little bit higher of a price point. Regular, the first three sets were $24.99 um, MSRP, and the these two, I think, are coming out at like $29.99, but Hallmark has them much less than list. Uh, so this is how they look if you were to see them on a store shelf. And uh, this one, they've even put artist quality on this one which they didn't put in their other ones, but they did always uh, say on the back of the tins that they were artist quality. This is the Shimmering Lights, and these are all paints that have mica in them. Uh, so they're slightly metallic, and if we look at this swatch here, this is they don't really look that metallic on white paper. They have a little sheen to them, but not much. But when you see it on black, they have much more of a sheen to them. But um, I also want to point out that they're very, very opaque. And you can see where I went and put a second layer on top after they dried. It didn't really add any benefit. You can pretty much get a full load and a full opacity with one layer with these. I think these would be best for working on dark papers or accenting um, paintings that are all done and you want to add that little bit of um, of gleam to them but they're not a super shiny uh, metallic they're definitely more of a shimmer or a pearl so um, if you want to like make your silk flowers kind of shimmery or you wanted to color your ribbon give it kind of a lame look uh, this would be a nice option uh, for that and for adding different accents to your painting so these are the shimmering lights and that's what the set looks like and one thing I really like about their palettes is that the um, the trays, the mixing trays, are at a 90 degree angle with the base, so they're completely flat. And I did grab one of my other tins from Lucas, and the thing that I that um, I don't like about that tin is it goes way down, just falls right over, and then you don't have any lip here to catch any paint that might uh, sloop off the edge. And also, there's not enough room for a third row of paints in the middle here where there is a perfect row for like seven more pans in the middle if you wanted to squeeze them in. So I think that the the tin alone, because these the empty tins go for 15 to 20 bucks, um, like on your art, fine art stores or Amazon or any place like that, that, I mean, just to get the tin and the half pans, even if you hate the paint, you're still, you know, getting a pretty decent deal there. But I actually happen to like the paint. Um, so that's Shimmering Lights. The next one we're going to look at is Pastel Dreams. And, um, here we have a swatch, and I want to show you here that I first did just a regular like watercolory swatch on the squares and let it go over the edge so I could see how opaque they were with one wash as I normally would paint, just the, the amount of paint I normally use. And they're not really chalky, and they're not all that opaque, which is surprisingly surprising for a pastel color in such a light wash. And then when I go over them with another layer, they didn't streak, they didn't lift up the color underneath, which I thought they would for sure. And you get more of a, a robust pastel color than a chalky pastel color. It's almost like you're using Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons. That's what they remind me of, that opacity and that um, that body of color. It's really nice. I thought for sure these would be chalky, but they're really lovely. Uh, so if you are looking for pastel shades, they are a good option. But I'm going to go into more what they're great for and what they're not. We are going to do a little demo. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that when you are mixing, typically I wipe out my palette when I'm done, but when you are mixing, they don't bead up. Um, they do kind of lay out, and you can see how kind of opaque they are, just how they're laying on the um, the palette there. It's also kind of how a Caran d'Ache watercolor crayon would behave. So um, these can be used on like colored board, colored mat board, on top of your colored cardstock if you're doing scrapbooking. So it's definitely, or card making, if you want to use these on like craft cardstock, I think they'd be really wonderful. Um, so there's a kind of a, I just wanted to show you that because I think if you're getting these to do transparent watercolor, you're going to have some problems where you can't get rich enough darks to get the contrast that you need in your painting. So here are some examples I did with the, um, with the paints. Whoops, let me go ahead a couple. Oh my goodness. 
All right, so these macaroons I painted with the pastel, the shimmer, the uh, pastel dreams, and um, I was able to lift away to my highlights, but you can see how rich and dark and deep the color was when I used it full strength, and I didn't use it very transparently. So it's a very, it's not a chalky color, it's more of a bold color, but the problem that I had was that I really couldn't make a, um, a nice shadow for underneath. In fact, I, I got into the, uh, the other palette and got my darkest kind of pure color and started to add some of those colors to it to trying to get some reflections and shadows and you could see a little bit of a shimmer where I did that but it really wasn't effective and then um, so you, this if you wanted to do like a traditional painting you're probably going to want to mix it with your other watercolors to get that effect and um, on this one I used them more as transparent watercolors and since I didn't have um, the, the darkest colors here are the browns and this uh, this pink colors deep pink I had to use that for my shadow areas in order to get the value that I wanted it was fun and um, I like how it really pushed my creativity but it is going to be a fresh uh, it could be a frustrating challenge if you're trying to just do your watercolors with this set you definitely this is definitely a specialty set and you'd want to augment it with something else I also wanted to let you know that there they put stickers on their pans now my first three sets that I get I got did not have the stickers on them so what I did to remove the sticker off this was I heated it with a heat gun and then I peeled it off and it did leave a lot of residue so then I put a piece of cardstock on it and heated it again and peeled it off and that took more off and then for the bits that were left I just took my Gamzol on a rag you could probably use baby oil or alcohol any sort of solvent um, and then I just rubbed it until it came off it does look like I might have scratched it a little bit so I probably was a little I, I scraped a little bit with my fingernail which I don't recommend because I got some little scratches on there it didn't scratch the paint but I can see them uh, but anyways that's how I got the sticker off if you don't want the stickers on there uh, I also wanted to show you if you're brand new to watercoloring and you're considering these products which I highly recommend um, I like that Prima has brought these out at such a low price point and they perform really well the only downside to these paints that I can see is that there's no light fast information so I don't know what pigments are in here I don't know if they're going to fade um, and keeping in mind that all the markers that you have are probably going to fade other than like the Winsor Newton pigment markers or the Winsor Newton watercolor markers all other markers that you're using are going to fade so maybe your pigment pens won't but you know your coloring markers so if that's not an important issue to you Definitely, I mean save some money and try these and then you can always buy tubes of paint and refill them if you're concerned about light fastness So this was the decadent pie set which is here and here and as you can see I put a third row in just some other half pans I'd kicking around um, To round out the set palettes do stain a little bit. I found using a magic eraser cleans them up real well I just haven't it doesn't bother me. So I haven't done it. This would be the um, The tropical I recommend start. No, the, I'm sorry strike that reverse it this is a classic set down each side here um and that's an is it hold on i think it is let me double check with this one yes this is the tropical set here which is what i'd recommend getting first and then these are just some extra pans that i had kicking around um and then decadent pies those two are my favorite classics is good too i mean you really can't go wrong but um and I think I might have actually taken out the white and popped in that um, that extra green there. I probably did because I think the classics has a white in it. But uh, so definitely the tropicals and decadent pies are my uh, the two I think most useful. And then um, after that, the other ones I think are equally equally useful. But the pastel dreams and the shimmering lights are definitely more specialty sets, and they're not going to behave like your your typical watercolors. They're definitely more like a watercolor crayon or gouache in consistency and paintability. So I just want you to know that before you buy them, in case that's not what you want or in case it is what you want that way you'll know what you're getting and if you've already purchased them you know how to use them to their best ability so I took the liberty of making a little sketch and I decided I would do a teacup and candies and we're gonna use the um, pastel dreams which I've, I've mixed everything up already so pastel dreams and I'll probably also use decadent pies just so I have some deeper colors to, I, I just so I have some stuff that I can use for shadows there we go we'll move that one right over there and um, we're just gonna start in painting because I've already sketched this out I am going to just grab a small round brush and I am going to wet the uh, inside of this teacup where the actual tea is with water now you get two browns in the um, pastel dreams. One is a little bit redder. One's a little bit cooler. 
one kind of tips a little bit towards red and one tips a little more towards green. We'll go with the one that's a little redder. I'm just going to give a little bit of that in there and let it kind of flow. Um, the, another interesting thing, I don't find the pattern, and maybe it's because I was using them darker, like thicker than I typically do with watercolor. I didn't find much of a color shift. If anything, they might have shifted a little bit darker, especially when I was working in layers. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to want to uh, make myself a nice shadow color. So what I think I'm going to do is actually grab um, some blue. I think I'll grab some kind of like an ultramarine blue. I have all kinds of green on my palette. I got to do this in a clean spot. Let's do this over here. I just need to clean an area. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm so disorganized today. I'm going on a, um, I'm chaperoning a field trip that's several days long and I'm trying to get a few things done before I go. So there we've got this lovely kind of ultramarine color. Well, maybe my brush was dirty. Who knows? Oh my gosh. And we'll grab a little bit of this and see if we get a nice gray. And that, you know, that's something you could always do too. You can always rearrange your paints. You could put more paints in the middle. Um, if you have a, several of these sets, you could break them up to however it is um, useful to you. And I'm going to go in with my shadows first, I think. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a shadow under the candies and the teacup. And I'm, I'm just going to warn you, I think this might be one of those longer videos. So feel free to just go ahead and put me in like fast forward mode. And, uh, and that's fine. I don't blame you. I'm going to get a little shadow in there. A lot of times I glaze my shadows on afterwards. Um, but I thought, oh, let's do something different today. I'm going to do a little shadow up here. Nice texture in those. I like this paper. This is very inexpensive. It's the Wind Power line from Strathmore. And I picked it up at... Um, at Michael's, I think I had a coupon, and I think it's what that's why I picked it up because I had a coupon that I wasn't using for anything, and I said, "What the heck?" I kind of want to touch that into the the tea water a little bit to kind of drag some of that up, get that reflected color. Um, and I'm very impressed with it. In fact, I'm not a huge fan of Strathmore, and there's nothing wrong with Strathmore. Don't don't take that to me that I'm like, you know, a Strathmore hater. I'm not. Uh, and I like their brown label just fine, but I really like this. I feel like it's got extra sizing in it or something. Maybe it's a recycled paper and then there's extra sizing from like its previous incarnations. I don't know, but I really just love the way the paint looks on it. And, um, and it's very inexpensive. I think I paid $7 or so from, for this pad. Um, so it's worth a look if you, if you see it. Um, I think it's totally worth a look. I love what these, what the pavements are doing though. Look at how pretty they're granulating. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna bring it up. Isn't that beautiful what's happening in there? Love it. Oh, so pretty. Um, I'm probably not gonna get too crazy with the background, so I think I'll probably just mix up a little bit more of that gray. Like, so now I'm seeing, you know what? That ultramarine blue makes this, this kit so much more useful. I should just put a pan of ultramarine blue in the middle. I could stick a little um, museum putty on the bottom, blue tack, I'll put a magnet on the bottom of my pan, and there I have a, I would have, you know, double the use, um, usefulness of that set just by adding that to it. So, I think it's, I think it's fun. I think it's just fine. But it's definitely a specialty set, and if, like, you can only buy one set and and uh, to do your watercoloring, go with the tropicals because that's going to give you way more options um, than this set will just because of what it contains. Now I'm going to do a little shadow under there. I like with this uh, with this paper because it's so heavily sized. I don't feel like I have to um, wet the paper. I feel like when I put the color down, I can then. Um, go grab some water on my clean brush and just kind of spread it around. So I didn't wet that area for the shadow. And if I just clean my brush, I can come in here and hit the edge of it and just kind of let it float out a little bit. So it's really, I really like this. I like this, uh, and because it's spiral bound, you can use like a sketchbook, take it, you know, I'm not taping it down or anything. It's 140 pound. This is like my new cheap paper pick. I love it. I love cheap paper. Don't you? Okay, so now I'm going to do a little patterning on our teacup here. 
Um, I'm going to start with this lighter pink. It's kind of like the mid-tone pink. Now the thing is, you can mix these colors. I didn't find I got a lot of mud, but because they are so heavy with white, um, you're probably not, you're limited how much you can mix. You're probably going to end up using more colors, like straight from the pan and not mixing them, than you will if you were just, if you were mixing. And I'm going to put a few little rosebuds in here with the uh, light color. And I am using it pretty wet because I want to be able to mix my other um, my other colors in there. I hope I don't sound like a complete spaz today. Any more than usual, I should just say, because um, I know I've got like <laughs> 10 minutes before the bus shows up with my kids. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to get this done because I'm insane. Do a little bit of just dabbing down there just to give a little... A little color. I'm going to go in with this darker pink. These these colors are unique. They're not. I don't have watercolors like this. Probably because I try to stick with single pigment colors, and these would definitely have white in them. But I'm finding them very enjoyable. So if you were doing this on a scrapbook page, you can paint a lot thicker with them and not wrinkle like a thinner cardstock like you would. Like watercolor paper is a lot thicker than cardstock, significantly so. Um, so I can see how that would have a major appeal for scrapbookers. So the greens in here are not going to give me a nice green. So I'm going to take this beautiful green gold that's in the Decadent Pies set. Um, I really should have cleaned my palette. Isn't that pretty? Then if I already had a blue I was using from this set, I could mix it in. Like if I wanted to use this, if, if I'm going to use that somewhere else and I could tint it a little bit, but it's much weaker tinting strength. Can you see that? It's not affecting the color as much as if I had used that ultramarine blue or um, or a thalo blue or anything. So, you know, it's still very pretty and it makes that brighter green kind of fit with this um, with this composition a little bit better. I don't really know what I'm putting in here, just some little... I don't have any fancy teacups. I should make a point of getting some fancy teacups because I don't know what a fancy teacup really looks like. So I'm just kind of dabbing. i put a little bit down here too. That's dry enough that I can dab a little green in there. And... Good enough. So, um, I don't know how well. Let's try one of the Shimmering Lights colors, just, just for fun, just for giggles here. I wouldn't necessarily go and do this, but um, this way we can see kind of how these colors react on white paper as part of a transparent watercolor painting. So I am just using the same brush. I'm loading up with this bronzy color. I put my... Um, I don't have my paints in the order that they came in. When I unwrap them, I put them back in kind of like a, uh, it's kind of a spectrum order. So I'm just gonna, oh, it's pretty. Uh, I'm just gonna pull this line around. And I feel like now that I've done that there, I really ought to do that somewhere else. Like maybe I will do this around the rim here. And I'm wishing I used the lighter color gold because I feel like that's too dark. Yeah, if you're going to do that whole room, you got to make sure your sketch is pretty accurate or it's going to look real wonky. All right, now I'm seeing that I do need some shadow on that um, handle, but I can't, I don't know if I can, oh yeah, I think I can get around. After that, um, after that stripe is dry, I can get around with that a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to skip down to this area because touch with the back of my hand that is dry. I can go ahead and put some more little flowers in here. We'll try them with the dark first. Let's do a few little... Oh, I do enjoy these though, I have to say. I honestly... I was a little skeptical. Um, I kind of have a little bit of complete set syndrome if it's something that's not crazy expensive. Um, I have like poor man's complete set syndrome if it's nothing that if it's if I can afford it, afford the whole set. <laughs> I kind of want it, which is kind of stupid. But um, so I was really, I was really anxious to try these, and um, 
and because I know the tins are such good quality that, and I always need empty palettes for different colors that I'm trying out, um, I knew that, that it would be a good value anyway. Um, but I mean, I'm just so thrilled with these, they're so fun. And now we'll go in with that lighter pink of the, um, of the, the other examples that I painted that I didn't, um, that I didn't share, um, that, that I didn't demo rather, and put them on my blog so that when I post this video, you can kind of look at them and, uh, whoops, I don't think I used that color. Um, just so you have that information, I think that might be a little helpful. And we're going to mix up a little bit more of that green. We did the, uh, no, what did we do? We didn't do that. We did the green gold color from the Decadent Pies. We mixed that with some of that. There we go. That's the thing. You get so many um, palettes out, it can be very confusing as to what you've used. And this is a quick sketch, so I'm really not being too particular. I just want a, like a random pattern in here. But I want it to somewhat, rep like, yeah, represent flowers. Okay, so that needs to dry. And I am going to kind of move over here to the chocolates. And um, let's just do this brown on its own. I'm going to try to paint. I'm gonna, I haven't sketched in swirls for like the, the icing on the chocolate. So I'm just going to kind of wing it. Just kind of paint around where I think there would be icing. Using the white of the paper because there's no whites. I'm trying to think. I thought that the... That the the classics had a white and a black in there, but maybe I'm mistaken. I don't remember throwing it away or cleaning it out, but maybe if you let, let me know in the comments below if that, if the classics had a white in them, I'm thinking, I thought they did, but, uh, but maybe they didn't. Concentrating. That's how you know if I when I stop gabbing that I'm concentrating. Happens so infrequently. All right. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to mix up uh, a little more of that shadow. More ultramarine blue there. You can add a little shadow. Towards the bottom. And dark chocolate. Might be a little too much. I could have done that when it was dry. That might have been a better idea. Maybe if I do a little bit of that dark right up next to the icing, it'll make it look like it's raised. That's a little better. Could have switched to a smaller brush, but I'm a big brush type of girl. Okay, we got another uh, another little candy over here, so we can do the same. Hopefully, we won't run into some flowers on the side. This end might be a little darker, so. I'm looking at a reference photo from graphicstock.com. Take some lovely things. All right, and get a little more paint. And we'll do our, we'll paint in between all the stripes here as well. It's kind of like a cafe sketch. If you ever see um, photos online, if you follow any urban sketchers and they, they sketch in restaurants and cafes, it's really cool. Whoops, completely botched that. Oh well. Oh well. Nobody's perfect. I want some chocolate. <laughs> the impression. We're just giving the impression of these chocolates, right? Yeah, this one, uh, this one went a little crazy. 
but that's all right. And then we get another little chocolate back there, which I can do the inside of the little peanut butter cup here. Um, don't think I'm gonna wet it though, because I think if I do that, I, it's not, I don't have that much room to work in. I, I don't need to wet it. There we go, get a little bit of the lighter color in there, let them swoosh together, do their thing. And then I think we're gonna let this all dry a little more dark in there. We're going to let this all dry before we go any further. Okay, that's all dry. Now I'm going to get a lighter brown by just taking that same brown I was using and just letting it, you know, just kind of thinning it down, uh, making sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. And I am painting in the back part of this wrapper. I want it a little bit lighter because the light is shining through it. You might even be able to see some things kind of through the glassine wrapper a little bit there. And then on the front side, I'm going to use that that, uh, whoop, that same lighter color at the top part of the wrapper, but I'm going to have it get darker as it goes down. I, actually, I think I'll do the whole thing that light color and then I'll just paint the darker after it dries. That'll be a little bit um, more sensible of a of an operation, I think. And let's see, we need some shadows on the handle of the teacup. So we'll go back to this gray that we mixed, just add a little water to it. I don't have to worry about watercolors. They can dry and you can reactivate them. And just getting a little bit of a shadow. It's a little dark. I think I'm gonna Oh, and that shimmering color is totally, uh, totally reactivating. I'm just going to go ahead and tone this whole handle. And then I'm just going to blot it a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I guess with the shimmering uh, lights, they're really um, liftable. Probably because they stay on the top of the paper so much. I'm going to grab a little of that color and actually move it over to this teacup and other places. Um, so that's good to know. So when you're painting, you can kind of account for that. Maybe if you're going to do any accents with the shimmering lights, do those last instead of um, trying to glaze over them because they are definitely very liftable. Well, that'll give me the opportunity to put that gold on there if I want to, uh, because I had talked about not really caring for the, um, the bronze after I had it down there. So not a mistake, an opportunity for an opportunity for change, right? And we've got our little um, we've got a little sil a little silver spoon there, but I don't want to do anything to that quite yet. I feel like I want to maybe have a pinkish gray, adding a little pink into that mixed gray, um, because this saucer is does kind of have a lot of pink reflections on it, so I want to kind of tone that. I don't like that brush very much. That's one of my, uh, not for this anyway, that's, I need one of my ones that act a little bit more natural, a little more absorbent. Nothing wrong with that brush I just had. It just wasn't, uh, with this paper, it just wasn't working all that great. I need it quite watery. And I feel like I want maybe like a bit of a golden color on the front of the teacup. I'm trying to think, um, you know, it's a really pretty Naples yellow in the, uh, the Decadent Pie set. I think that would be ideal. That would just be lovely. Let's kind of glaze. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now it's like, just because I'm used to painting and I have a pretty good color vocabulary just from what I've painted with over the years. I mean, I would like call this Naples yellow and it makes me, and it's so funny because some of the colors, like the ultramarines, they, they behave just like a regular ultramarine would. So it makes me think that that's probably the pigments they're using. Um, I just wish they would come out with those pigment, uh, the pigment information so we would know for sure. Uh, so when we're painting, we would know whether we need to protect it in like a notebook or if we can hang it on the wall and not worry about it. I'm dabbing in some of that Naples yellow because I just really like it. It's awfully pretty. 
Give it a teacup up there. It's looking like some pretty weak tea, isn't it? And um, let's see, is that that's pretty dry? Wow, that dried quick. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit darker with my brown. So the brown plus the ultramarine blue. I'm trying not to go too crazy with too many colors. I have a lot of tempting palettes out here right now. Brush is too wet. Go in and just kind of. It's so because the light is passing through the wrapper. That's why we see it lighter at the top. And let's see if I can get some of the folds in there. Not all of them, just a little indication that. That you'd have a little bit darker area where the wrapper folded. You can drag up some of those fold lines there too. And whoops, that's not the brown I was using. Stick to one brown, I think. I don't think we need more than one brown here. And just gonna glaze in some more brown, make it a little richer. And I feel like that tea is a little too weak looking. <laughs> So I'm going to add a little more color to some of it anyway, give it a little bit of well, it has some reflection in it actually, so we don't want to darken it all, just a little bit. Nothing worse than weak tea. And really, I think that's about it. Maybe a little bit more shadow under one of those chocolates. I got to blot off the extra. What? Oops, I got a fuzzy in there. A little shadow in there. A little more shadow under there. Oh, we got to paint our spoon handle. We haven't done that though. Just, I'm um, just giving it a little bit darker shadow right up close to the plate. Okay, so we got to do something about that spoon. Mixing up a little gray. It's a subtle gray because I wouldn't call that burnt sienna. It definitely has a pastel body to it. Um, but it is orange enough and it is deep enough in color that it gives us that burnt sienna uh, quality for mixing. I guess I can go pretty bold with my color here because I think it's going to lift a bit if I glaze over it. Probably should have done a wash of like a cool gray first. We'll see how it we'll see how it goes. The spoon's hidden the the, the uh, bowl of the spoon is hidden behind. That. What I'm going to do, I think, is just wet my brush and very gently um, go over here. Oops! I can hear some water being run upstairs, so it's going to get loud down here in a minute. So why don't I just go ahead and pause it now and let this dry, and we'll meet back up again after this dries. So it's going to get really loud down here in a second. Okay, this is all dry. I futzed around a little bit with it while the uh, water pump and furnace were going, and I have to say that I kind of wish I didn't put the spoon on. I don't like the shadow, um, and I find that if you start going in there and uh, messing about too much, you just get, you kind of get mud and it lifts up what's underneath, and I'm not sure if that's because this paper is has a lot of sizing on it or um, if the paint is extra liftable, um, but but there you have it. I'm, I think it's fun. I think it's cute. I enjoy painting with them, but they're definitely more like using a watercolor crayon than using a regular watercolor. I think they're a great addition to a transparent watercolor set, um, or for somebody looking to get more into a gouache style of painting, because you can build the layers up, as I showed you in my, uh, my macaroons here. You can see you can build up and it lifts easily, but you can keep layering without it lifting. When you are using a lot of, a lot of water though, like I did in the transparent techniques here, um, it did want to lift up a little bit more. So just something to um, to think about. And if you have these already, play with them, use them, get to know them. They're going to behave a little differently than your traditional transparent watercolors. They have um, 
it's not a chalkiness to them, but it's definitely almost like a waxy body to them. The only thing that they really remind me of is like the Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons. Um, and they're a product I happen to really like. So as long as you don't go in it with the mindset that these are going to be transparent colors, I think you're going to be very pleased. And I think these are going to work extremely well on colored scrapbook paper, colored cardstock, and for your stamping techniques when you want to like stamp on craft cardstock and then color, make like a, you know, maybe you want a yellow peony and you stamp the, the stamp out on craft or a dark colored cardstock, then you can paint over with this and it will show up. Same thing with the shimmering lights. They'll be great for accents because they are going to show up really well on your dark cardstock. Like if you're doing a brush lettering or anything like that, it's going to be a boon to those types of projects. So um, I just wanted to give them a good overview and uh, help you guys use them if you have them already. And if you don't, um, I got mine from hallmarkscrapbook.com. I'll put a link in the video description. They're having um, I think a 15% off sale on the Prima stuff right now. So, uh, and it's an affiliate link just to let you know, if you do click on it, I do earn a, a small percentage. I thank you for your support. Um, but I just like to put that out there just so you know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video if you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy crafting.